Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avs Media Composer and Symphony, I thought for the next few lessons we would take a look at creating DVDs from our Media Composer or Symphony timeline. Now it's a little more involved than you might think. Obviously, Media Composer and Symphony are standalone applications, they're not sold as part of a bundle. And depending on the platform that you're working on, whether it's Mac or Windows, it's a little bit more involved to create those approval DVDs. Now I say approval DVDs, but they could very well be final DVDs or even Blu-rays for that matter that you want to give to your clients. Like I said, it's a little bit different process Mac or Windows. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out first lesson. We're just going to talk about getting the files out of your system. And we're going to talk standard def. Working in HD is fairly self-explanatory, but standard def you sort of have a few different flavors of DVDs that you might want to create. So like I said, what we're going to do in lesson one is we're just going to talk about working in Media Composer and Symphony and getting those files out to your desktop to start encoding. Then in lesson two, once we have the files on our desktop, we're going to talk about encoding. Now encoding is going to work a little bit differently only because we need to go to a third party application to do it. But the best part is, is that by making your Media Composer or Symphony purchase, you actually get a free encoding program that you can use whether you're doing web files, whether you're doing DVDs that you can use to encode these files for whatever you happen to need them for. In the last lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to change things up a little bit. It's actually going to be two lessons. The first lesson I'm going to show you on the Mac, how to create DVDs inside of Adobe's Encore. Then what we're going to do is we're going to switch things up a little bit over on the Windows side because for all of you Windows users of Media Composer and Symphony, when you make your purchase, you actually get Avid DVD from Sonic free with your purchase. It's only a Windows application. That's why I'm going to show you Encore on the Mac and I'm going to show you Avid DVD on Windows. Okay, not too short of an introduction here, but let's just get into Media Composer or Symphony anyways and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Symphony, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And I'm going to open my sequences bin first, and I'm going to come down to my stock footage. I'm just going to open the motocross footage. Let's just create a sequence that's about a minute long. And as you can see, I've already got some in and out points marked on these clips here. So let's just take them and we'll just drop them into a new timeline here. I'm going to drop that into sequences. And let's just, like I said, grab the rest of the footage that already has in and out points marked on them because it doesn't really matter for the purpose of what we're doing, what is in our timeline. We're getting pretty close now. And there we go. I think we're at about a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back here. I need to change the starting time code of my sequence here. I'm just going to come into Sequence Report. I'm going to punch in 01. And I'm going to say Apply. We're just going to cancel here. So you can see now that my sequence starts at the one hour mark. We're just going to come all the way down. You'll see we go a little bit longer. We go down to about 128, so I'm just going to come back here. I'm just going to come down a little bit here. We'll just make it about one second here. Or what I should actually say is about one minute, not one second. And what I'm going to do here is, whenever I create DVDs, I always like to have a little bit of black at the top and at the tail. So some people would come up and they'd use Add Filler, which you can find right here, or Load Filler right there. But I don't like to do that. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come to Clip, and I'm going to create a new title. What I'm going to do is, inside this title, I'm simply going to make it black. I'm just going to close it up. I'm going to save it. Of course, we're going to call this black. I'll save it into sequences for right now. That's fine because I don't have another bin open. I'll just say save. I do have a graphics bin in here. I'm just going to close my footage here for one second. I'll just open the graphics bin. I'll just take that black title, stick it right in there. Just for the sake of organization, you know, I always stress organization. I always say it's very important. And what we're going to do is just drop in 10 frames of black here, just like such. There we go. So we got it at the top, got it at the tail. So basically what we now have, a little bit of black. So when the disc starts playing, it'll start on black. Then our footage will start. Maybe it's going to fade up. In this case, it just cuts on, but that's okay. Once we get down to the end, of course, instead of it pausing on that last frame and then going back to the menu, it's actually going to go to black before it does that. I always find it just a bit of a better way to go. And like I said, we could always just come back to the beginning here. And I could simply just put a dissolve in. Maybe we'll make it 12 frames, have it starting, say add. Again, do the same thing down here at the end, dissolve, we're ending, we want it to be 12 frames, there we go, so you can see, starts on black, fades up very nice, does the exact same thing at the end. Okay, now like I said, if we were going to be you know, creating a Blu-ray of this, we're already working in HD, we could just take this timeline, export it, same as source onto our desktop, we'd be good to go. But working on standard F DVDs is a little bit different because we've got a few flavors of video that we might want to work with. What we could do is we could have our video letterboxed 
we could have it anamorphic widescreen, or what we could also do is we could even have it pan and scan. Now obviously any pan and scan that you're going to be doing would need to be done within Media Composer or Symphony, but I'm going to show you how you'd set up each one of these. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to create different sequences to show you how this is going to work. And what I'm going to do with the first one is I'm simply going to call this anamorphic. Now the reason I'm calling this one anamorphic is because when I come up to format and I switch my project type to be standard def, we're essentially all set to go. You can see that if I actually come up here, right now everything looks correct because I'm looking at this in 16 by 9. But if I come up here and I switch this to be 4 by 3, you'll see everything is stretched. And that's okay because what's going to happen is, is that when the DVD player is playing this back, it's actually going to crush it back down. Or actually when it's encoded, it's going to be told that we're going to want to crush this back down to be 16 by 9. Now you're also going to see that my footage doesn't really look very good. It looks kind of blocky and very chunky. The reason it is, because I'm actually right down here, you'll see that I'm actually, the video quality is set to draft. There we go, much nicer. Okay, so basically as far as anamorphic goes, this is really all set to go. So what I want to do now is I want to set up a letterbox version of the same thing. So how do we do that? Very easy. What I'm going to do is come back to my sequence here. I'm simply going to duplicate it by hitting Command and D on the Mac, Control and D on Windows, and we'll call this letterbox. Now, to make this really letterbox, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down to about the midway point here. I'm going to create a new video track by simply hitting Command and Y on the Mac, Control and Y, obviously, for all my Windows friends out there. And I'm going to call up the effects palette, Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows. You'll see I kind of ruined it a little bit because I'm already all the way down here to the bottom in the reformat section, and there is 16 by 9 letterbox right there. I'm simply going to take that, drag it, and drop it down on the top layer. Now what's going to happen is, is that if your footage still looks like this, the reason being is because you're not monitoring the proper layer here. Now the reason I'm doing this and just sticking it on the top layer is to avoid having to go through and either pre-comp stuff or take the effect and apply it to every shot. You can simply apply it to a track and it's going to trickle down to everything below it. Very cool. Now, last but certainly not least, we might want to create a pan and scan full frame version. No problem as well. What I'm going to do is instead of taking the letterbox version, I'm just simply going to take the anamorphic version. I'm going to duplicate it and we'll call this pan and scan. Very cool. Now, like I said, what's going to happen here, a little bit different. And what I've actually done here, you'll see if I go to the anamorphic version, that's actually the letterbox version. I just didn't double click on them here, so we'll just call this one anamorphic. There we go. So you'll see now we're proper letterbox, anamorphic. This is going to be pan and scan here. That's okay. It's got the effect on it, not to worry about it. I can just remove it like such. Again, back to the effects palette. You'll see inside of the effects palette right here, pan and scan. We're simply going to take it again, drag it right onto the topmost layer. Now, nothing happens when I'm looking at it. You'll notice that when I had the 16 by 9 letterbox in that top layer, immediately it crushed that footage down and added the letterbox into the top and the bottom. Now what happens is that if I step into effects mode, again, my shortcut for effects mode, shift and Y on the keyboard, if you don't have it mapped, no problem. Remember, you can find it right over here at the top of your timeline. So what I'm going to do is just step into effects mode, and I'm just going to bring the effects editor right over here to the middle so that we can see it. And you'll see right at the top here, very first option we have is the aspect ratios. The first drop down being, of course, the source, and the second one being the target. Now in this case, I want to have the source set to be 16 by 9 anamorphic. Now, as soon as I do that, you're going to see this bar appear here on the left and the right. But of course, nothing's been updated. But of course, you're going to notice that if I step out simply by hitting Y on the keyboard to step back in edit mode, as soon as I do, you're going to see now that this footage has actually been cropped out. You'll see, stretched out and cropped. Now, it's also important to keep in mind about this is you're going to want to go through and check each shot to make sure that nothing important is being cut off by this pan and scan. That's okay. Even that one's okay. That one's pretty good. This one's okay. I think we're okay in general. Very cool. Yep, we're good. Okay. So we now have these three timelines that we're going to want to export. What I'm going to do is just simply hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select the entire length here. You know what I should probably do just for fun? I think I'm just going to import some music here. What I'm going to do is simply come to the clip spin. I'm going to right click, say import. We're going to come down to my Mac drive. We're going to come into footage. We're going to come into music. I'm just going to choose something from Rampant Design Tools here. Why not? I'm just going to choose a 60 second track. It doesn't even matter which one. I'll just select this one here. 
Okay, it's a broadcast wave file. We'll just say we're working in 2398. There we go. And we're just putting this in for the purpose of having a music track when we get into creating the actual DVD files. And you can see that if I come down here to my little hamburger, come up to my audio data, I come to waveform, there's the audio all the way down to the end. Now you'll see it stretches down a little bit past 60. But I think what we're going to do is we'll just end it right here. Like I said, this is just really for the purpose of having an audio track here. And I'll just dissolve it out there. I don't mind if it ends a bit early. Okay, very cool. Again, we're just going to make sure we've got the entire length marked. We want to make sure we have all our tracks selected as well. I should actually take this music here and copy it into each one. Take Anamorphic, drop the music in, and we'll do the same thing with Letterbox here. Okay, perfect. Again, we're just going to select everything on the track. Now you're probably thinking, well, Kev, why are you selecting everything on the track? It really doesn't matter, does it? But it actually does, and I'll show you why in just a second. Okay, so we're ready to export this. Now, how I like to get in and export these files is very simple, by using QuickTime references. And the great thing with exporting is that if I have all of my uh, sequences set up exactly the way I want to export with the entire uh, sequence marked and all my tracks selected, I can simply select all three of the sequences right click and say export. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send them to the desktop into a new folder called files for DVD and I'm simply going to say create and you'll see that right now this one is called pan and scan because that just happens to be the first sequence in my bin and I have a QuickTime reference set up here. I'm just going to come into options for a second and you're going to see there's really nothing fancy set up about this at all. You'll see the default is digital mastering or fast draft. You'll see as soon as I select fast draft, a few options change. But what I want to do is just simply select digital mastering. You'll see as soon as I do, it's going to mix the audio tracks down. I only got two channels, so that's really not that big of a concern. But basically, I want to leave everything else exactly the way it is. Now, you remember I said before that I have all my tracks selected, and I've selected the entire duration of the timeline. And I said that was important. Now, why that was important was because you'll see that inside of my QuickTime reference export settings, I'm, I've told it to use marks, meaning the in and out point. I've also told it to use the enabled tracks. So that's something very important to keep in mind when you're setting up your export templates, is that if you have these set, you need to make sure that you get in and you abide by the in and out point and make sure you select all your tracks. Now in this case, all I'm going to do, since I'm happy with the way that this is, I'm just going to say save, and it's going to file to DVD, and I'm simply going to say go. And you're going to see that what it's going to do first is it's going to go through with, in this case, pan and scan, and it's going to render this video file out. So basically the pan and scan effect, and once it's done, it's going to take about two seconds to export that. There we go. And you'll see that with the last one, which is the letterbox one, it's now creating the letterbox effect. And again, in about two seconds, this is going to be done. Okay, here we go. Boom, done. So let's hide Symphony or Media Composer depending on what you're using. And I'm going to come to my Files for DVD folder. And you'll see that I have three files in here. Three of actually each uh, movie files and WAV files. Obviously, movie file you'll see very tiny. Why? Because it's referencing the media that's in my Avid Media Files folder. Obviously, the music file that was exported will be at full quality. And basically, the move is referencing this audio file when you call it up to play it back. Now, I want to talk about a great free little application that I love to use all the time. So let's say I wanted to find out more information about uh, Anamorphic. Why not? It happens to be the first one. Most people like to open this in QuickTime. You know, they'll go into the movie properties, but it never really gives me all the information I want to know. Well, there's a great little app called Media Info. You'll see it right here, Media Info Mac. I love this application. It's free. What I'm going to do is simply take Anamorphic. I'm going to drag and drop it right over here into Media Info Mac. And you'll see that I get all the information I could possibly ever need about this file. But the most important thing that I need to know is that it is DV and it is 720 by 480. In this case, it's 23976, which is fine because that's what it was in my timeline. But the most important thing is that it's already at the resolution, 720 by 480, that I need to flip this file over to MPEG-2 without having to worry about getting in, scaling, and things like that. So you see, taking these files, getting them ready, prepping them inside a Media Composer for standard def DVD is actually very easy. You just have to think through what type of file you're going to want to export. Is it going to be anamorphic? letterbox or pan and scan. Okay, now in part two of the lesson, like I said, we're going to get in, we're going to talk about encoding. We're going to talk about encoding inside of Sorensen Squeeze. Why Sorensen Squeeze? Well, because it came free with Media Composer and Symphony 
when you made your version 6 purchase. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.